Good morning. If you just joined us, guess what? You are locked on to DBS, watching DBS this morning. And I'm Chela Mendes, your morning host. And we're going to keep you in the know and share all the good vibes. Now, speaking of that, recently, 11 Peace Corps volunteers have taken the oath to be here for two years in St. Lucia. And they're working on a special project to help with literacy right here in St. Lucia. So let's find out exactly what it's about. Over the 28 years of partnership, we have had close to 1,000 Peace Corps volunteers serve in St. Lucia. So this is something to be very proud of because we have been consistent in terms of receiving volunteers from 1961. We are delighted that this new group, these 11 trainees, accepted our invitation to serve here in St. Lucia and to continue the legacy, the partnership between Peace Corps and the people of St. Lucia. And they are here to serve in the capacity of literacy support volunteers. They will be working under the umbrella of the project that we are currently implementing on island, a primary English literacy project. And since they've been here from July 2nd, yes, they have participated in training to prepare them for the role and also to acquire the necessary skills, attitudes, and knowledge to be able to function effectively in our school system and in the wider community. And as I say every year, and I'll keep saying it, the training is very intense. It includes long hours and also many assignments, assessments, and whatnot. And yet, despite the normal response when they are asked, how are you doing today? They would say, well, last. <laughs> <laughs> despite this normal response, they persevered and they leaned on the support of the host families who opened their hearts and their homes to them, the support of our trainers, our current volunteers, Peace Corps staff, and they have successfully completed the training. About 18 years ago, I sat right where this group sits right now, different country, of course, swearing in as a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, that day, I don't really remember what was said. I don't remember who spoke. All I remember is the excitement I felt at completing training and getting ready to go to my site and start working. And I think for that reason, I'm going to try to keep this mercifully brief, mercifully brief for you all so that you can move on. Um, you know, I, I would say that the initial euphoria of getting to my site, you know, the first few months, it's very exciting, starting a new job, meeting new people. But as I think all the RPCVs and current volunteers in the room can attest, you know, soon the initial euphoria wears off and it becomes a reality, uh, a job that you're doing far away from home. Um, and for that reason, as, you know, as, as happy an occasion as this is a swearing in ceremony, um, it can feel a little bit like, you know, when you look back on it a few months later, it, it can feel a little bit premature in the sense that, you know, it's a, it's a very exciting feeling, but then when it's month eight and you don't know what to do with your class, you can sort of think back and think, wow, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, for me, I arrived at my site. I was an agriculture volunteer. Uh, that was a potato, potato producing community. It was a pretty healthy cash crop. The farmers were well established. They frankly didn't really need my help. And I remember thinking, well, what do I really have to offer to this community? Um, I won't go into the list of accomplishments that I eventually had. Uh, you can see me afterwards for that, and I'll talk your ear off about it. Um, but I just wanted to say that it will be difficult. We're all here for you. Everyone in this room, staff, counterparts, homestay families, current volunteers, future volunteers. Um, you know, Charmone, when you have problem in your site, something in your school that you want to take care of, you come see me when you spent too much at Carnival and you don't have any more money. <laughs> um, and also know that you're not the first. Uh, as Charmone mentioned, you know, Peace Corps has a long history 
Since its founding in 1961, over 235,000 Americans have served in 141 countries. Today, there are about 7,400 volunteers serving in 61 countries across the world. And here in St. Lucia, the first volunteers arrived on October 15th, 1961. And since that time, over 1,000 volunteers have served here in St. Lucia and over 4,000 across the Eastern Caribbean program. And really, the inspiration that, that, that I draw from that is just that for such a long time, for 58 years now, St. Lucians and Americans have been working together towards a common goal. And that's really what it's all about. Um, you know, in the best of times, it's sort of easy to think about. But now, you know, in our current age, it's a time of heightened anxiety worldwide. You know, mass shootings in the US, protests in Hong Kong, global warming, any myriad number of other issues that you'd like to bring up. It's heartening that our nations have been working in peace for 58 years now. But we're all gathered here today to support these men and women who will become Peace Corps volunteers. Welcome back, family. We are going to keep things moving right along here with DBS this morning. Now, because you're family, and we care about you. We want to make sure that you're safe, that you're ready, that you're prepared because you know it is prime time. It is hurricane season and you know how hot it has been. So we have to be on the alert and we have our friends from the Red Cross. We're going to flash back to some advisories, some tips that are useful, something that will never get dated. And hopefully if you're not already prepared, it's going to help you be well on your way. Good morning to you, St. Lucia. It's time to rise and shine, and we are definitely waking you up in the know. Right now, we are with our friends at the Red Cross, so a special good morning to Ms. Gillard. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thanks, and a very pleasant good morning to all viewers. Super. I'm so happy to have you here with us, and this is the point. Definitely make sure you wipe the sleep out of your eye, grab your coffee, because you need to start taking down notes. We are going to be going over disaster preparedness. So again, precaution is better than cure. And when it comes to being prepared, Red Cross is one of our go-to bodies for that. So Ms. Gillard, let us you know, start off with what St. Lucia needs to know right now. Right now, um, every St. Lucian should be prepared. You know, late August, September, that's the peak of the hurricane season and we had all the months ahead to be prepared. So I'm hoping that all our viewers out there, all St. Lucians, do know what to do, have everything in place, um, all the kits to leave home if they have to leave home is fully packed, that the family members have all the documents in a safe location, that if they have to leave, they can just grab the bag and leave. Anything can happen. Um, employing persons to please, please, if you're living in low-lying area, make sure that all your things that may be spoiled by the water is off the ground, up on the shelf. If you're living riverside, make sure that you find a safe place to go to. Do not wait until the water is underneath your bed to leave because we have had the experience that people wait for the last minute. They call in the fire service and that's putting other people's lives at risk. So please, if you know that your house is not safe, make arrangements with your friends and families. Make sure you know where the shelter in your community is and have your bags packed. So if you have to leave, you leave with some food, a sleeping item. When you go to the shelters, there's nothing at shelters for you. You'd need to wait a couple hours or even a full day before um, the shelters can get supply. So please make sure you have your kit, your disaster kit, with some basic food items. Don't forget in your medication, yes, your sir. medication, your glasses, a little cash on hand because... Um, you may have money in the bank and you cannot get to the bank. It's always good to have a little cash on hands in times of disasters. Great. 
And even with that, I know one of the things that you all offer at the Red Cross, um, I feel like we touched on that last year, is the family planning to put together an emergency plan. Definitely. We have what we call the family emergency plan. It's a little brochure which tells you what to do, who does what, and it's not only for a hurricane, it's multi-hazard. Um, you can feel free, viewers can come in, we can have a one-on-one -on -one with them and give them one of the plans. You see, I feel like, again, this is yet another important time. In case you did not know or were not aware that this is actually available, this is a critical, a critical point to have that. So whether or not, you know, we get hit, it will not do you harm to come down, get the advice, get the plan as well. That way, again, you know, knowing is half the battle, being prepared Prepared. is better than, That's you know, being it. lost in the storm. Preparedness, preparedness is the key preparedness. If you are prepared, you have everything in place, your family members know what to do, where to get whatever it is to run out of the house, you will be less stressed. And I know you also, you all at the Red Cross have teams, or should I say like subunits within the different communities as well. Yes, we have our CDRT teams. A message has gone out to them that there's a warning. So they get their members together and be in a state of preparedness. Now, when it comes to Red Cross, do you all offer shelters? No, we do not offer shelters. Hey, is not a shelter. However, it's a neighbor. Somebody from across the road needs to run, and hey, is the first place. We will allow them to come in. But what we do, we assist at shelters. Shelter is a business of the Ministry of Education because most schools are used as shelters and the principals are the shelter managers, but we assist at shelters. Well, St. Lucia, this is your reminder to stay prepared. If you need the guidance and you need a preparedness plan, make your way over to the Red Cross. They'll be happy to assist you with that as well. And um, any closing words that you'd like to leave them with? Well, we just want St. Lucia to um, be safe. Um, listen to the local news, listen to the local um, report and forecast. Do not depend on other people. You can do it for yourself so you have the message and you know what to do and when to do whatever you have to do. Do not go out panic buying. At this time, people should have their bags of stuff prepared to move out. You had from June to November. And like we tell people, every week, every month, you buy one item extra and you put in that bucket or that bag. So when you have to leave, when you hear a storm is coming our way, you do not have to go out to the supermarket and, and buy. You know, you have everything already there waiting for you. Again, this is advice to take out. I know plenty of people watching might be part of those going into panic buying. But again, if the worst does not come, then at least you know, continue to be prepared, be ready. Let that be a wake-up call for you. And of course, being prepared is way better than being in a frenzy during the storm. So I want to thank you very much thank for you your so advice. Thank you so very much, and I wish you a pleasant day and be safe. Thank you very much. St. Lucia, stay safe. So we're back at the gym. Missed a couple days, but we're going to make up for that. Shh, please don't tell wheels. Part of the crew is here, so Kwame, of course, holding the camera and keeping our lives miserable. Just saying. Shemi J. Yeah, good morning, viewers. You know already we are killing it. Boom. That's right. Now, of course, with that, wheels is far away, but still it feels so close to us. But if you're wondering what he's been up to, Training is definitely part of his life and even as he's on vacation, he is still training, video calling us, but not only that, he is training clients overseas. So, as we warm up for our workout, check out what he's been up to and some of his clients. That's it, take your time, stretch, down one, two. Take your time, take your time. Up. That's it. Relax your head. Let's go. Sprint into it. Sprint, sprint. Let's go.
bring your body down bring your upper body down and bridge bring the bow over your head that's it control it nice full stretch full stretch let's go
So this is how we wrap up the show. We've woken you up. We have you in the know. And of course, the last thing that I need to do is send you all the positive vibrations that I can generate. So that way, we all share this energy, share the good vibes. And remember, keep it locked to DBS. Follow us on YouTube at DBS This Morning and on Instagram at DBS758. And until then, I'm Chayla Mendes telling you stay blessed, keep safe, stay positive, and I'll see you again next time. Music